All right, thank you for staying with us. We cannot stop engaging the youth because they do form 75% of the nation. Therefore, their vote does count and their voice also counts. But some of them are giving up. They think the system is rigged and they don't need to do anything about it. In fact, there's a story here on the Daily Nation. The youth say why we will not vote. They're tired of recycled politicians, they say, who don't fulfill election promises, convinced that the system is rigged and frustrated about ethnic mobilization around politics. We will talk about that in just a bit. But for now, let me introduce my guest real quick. Simon Gikuru, Secretary General ANC, will be joining us online shortly. And Lavenda Ojala is here with us, political and gender affairs expert. Alenga Torostad is also here with us, political commentator. And Bilian Ojiwa, community activist, is with us as well in studio. Simon, I'll start with you here because this story directly touches on you, especially on the standard, the Raila factor in Mudavad in Kalonzo Field. They say now that uh, th there's a cold war threatening the One Kenya Alliance and suspicion triggered by revelations by buying the cease negotiations between YP and ODM leaders forces Mudavadi to consider other options, including a new political formation. Is there some infighting there from the NC perspective? Uh, thank you very much and good morning, viewers. Um, I'm here in Kisumu, and it's interesting because uh, when you say that, when you ask whether they are infighting in Oka, while um, we are here for a very, very major event at Kakamega, whereby His Excellency Musale Mudavadi, His Excellency Kalozo Musioka, uh, Senator Gideon Moi, and Senator Wetangula are going to be launching the OCA nationwide political campaigns. Um, so when you uh, talk about, you know, talks of this talking to the other or that talking to the other, that is not correct. And if anything in politics, there is always a room, you give room for people to keep um, expressing themselves. But uh, what I will tell you is that OCA is very solid. Uh, today we are going to be having a major inaugural uh, campaign, campaign uh, trail for the, for the principles, whereby we will have uh, a delegates, more than 3,000 delegates meeting at the Kakamega Golf Club. And after that, you're going to, uh, to address a rally in, in uh, Kakamega town. From there, we will be proceeding to uh, several other places and uh, eventually on Sunday, we'll be in, uh, in Thika uh, and maybe also do a rally along uh, Thika Road. So, Oka is very strong. Oka is very uh, focused. And uh, we, are, we want to demystify this uh, talk that is going to be projected that uh, this race is going to be a two-horse race. That is not true. Oka is going to shock Kenyans because Oka is going to offer the next best option for the uh, position of president of this country. And as ANC, we are talking to our, uh, our partners in Oka. We are persuading them because we are presenting His Excellency Musala Mudabadi as the best suited candidate to fly the Oka flag. So um, the issue of who is talking to who is, 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 always, um, is always there in politics. But from where I sit, in my capacity as the Secretary General, uh, Oka is very strong, and uh, as I told you, we are going to be uh, moving across the nation so that we can remove this tagline that um, there are only two horses in this race. But Simon, therein lies the problem, because Galonzo Musioka is saying that he has the highest number of elected MPs, while NC, your boss, says that he's the most acceptable. I mean, when are you deciding who's going to fly the flag of Oka? You see, issues of uh, coalitions and making decision making in coalitions is not usually a very easy one. But uh, we have a joint secretariat that is looking into the uh, SWOT analysis of each of our principles so that then we are guided and we can come up with uh, a candidate that is acceptable across board. Yes, of course, uh, WIPA would argue that they have more MPs. And uh, uh, then Kano will argue it is the oldest party. For, people, for Kenya, will also argue they have this and that strength. But at the end of the day, we are looking at a candidate that we can present to Kenyans and will be accepted across the board. So the formula is, is there. We have a joint secretariat that is looking at all these dynamics so that uh, we can have, um, we can have um, a, a joint candidate that is agreeable and acceptable. And also a candidate that uh, can fight, fight it off with the 
with the, the leading or the, the one that seemed to be leading at the moment. So, um, and I can tell you that as ANC, we are doing everything possible within our means to make sure that we persuade, we lobby our partners in Oka so that Muslim Mudavad will emerge uh, eventually as the flag bearer uh, for Oka. As a new Secretary General, I'm, I'm sure you have a plan A all the way to plan Z. Do you have an exit strategy? Should things not go according to what you plan? Well, all I can tell you is that, one, I don't speak for Oka. Number two, as ANC, using our party structures, and our highest organ is the Amani Council. The Amani Council has already issued uh, the, the party's uh, candidate, uh, whatever, uh, presidential ticket to His Excellency Musala Mudavadi. So from a party perspective, we have already uh, issued our party certificate for the position of president uh, to, to the party leader, who is uh, Musala Mudavadi. In, in that meeting that uh, we resolved to give him the party ticket, we also gave him the go ahead. We also resolved that um, he is going to be uh, the chief negotiator on behalf of the party in engaging possible partners in coalition matters or partnership in terms of, of, of politics. So uh, do we have a plan B? Well, our plan is one, as ANC, and I'm not speaking for Oka here, that His Excellency Mosela Mudavadi is running for the high office of president it is not for him to decide. It is for the party structures and for the three million registered members. And that one we've already we've already done it using our structures. So we are now trying to persuade our partners, as I told you, because politics is about uh, give and take. Uh, but from a party perspective, um, he, the only option you have as a party is that he must be on the ballot. All right. Stay with me, Simon. Let's, let me bring in Alenga on this. Alenga, what do you make of this political situation right now that Kenya is facing? Uh, Trevor, thank you for the opportunity to be on your show and a very good morning to our viewers. Uh, first and foremost, um, if you look at the, the headline on both the, the Standard and the Nation, uh, they both um, hint at um, a division within the One Kenya Alliance. And uh, perhaps I will just say it's not really a big surprise because uh, for you to be able to look at a coalition and determine where it is going, it is uh, imperative that we first look at the nature and the form of that coalition and the attendant issues that brought about that coalition. Basically, uh, One Kenya Alliance was formed to, with um, a covert uh, intention to isolate uh, uh, pri former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. And also, the grievances that they brought on the table were things to do with party funds. So those are not really issues that can make you stand the, to the test of time, because uh, the reasons seem to be so parochial. They seem to be so, um, so, so immediate. So I think they are struggling now to give themselves a long-lasting um, commitment, which cannot now be uh, engineered along the path. But then, uh, what is the issue we also need to examine in all this? Um, are, we, are we remaining in a situation where we have to keep waiting for uh, one, two, three people to determine what direction we follow, um, where we're going to put our vote? I mean, why are we narrowing or, or uh, stifling the democratic space instead of opening it to more opportunities? Yeah. And then uh, the issue of uh, balkanization in terms of uh, getting a number of kingpins together so that you can be able to pursue a certain agenda with a vote baskets in mind. Yeah. That is a, a, an idea we need to vacate. But I, I think I like the idea of um, trying to, to nationalize our, um, our destiny as a country. Yeah. And in that breath, then, I, I, I tend to like the idea being advanced by uh, the Azimiola Umoja. Yeah. Because it looks at um, a paradigm shift where for once, we are, we are trying to go around the country to find everybody on board. And with, with, a, with a word umoja in it alone, then it becomes a catchy phrase that um, if you 
walk away from it, then ideally it's like you're walking away from unity. It's like um, you're, you're planning something against unity. And then is that the path we want as a country? Yes. Indeed, when we look at uh, the political formations we've had over time, they have been political formations that have, uh, are just um, formed on... Um, community or tribal mathematics and then when we get into power we sit down and try to to analyze okay yeah. trevor brought these numbers how many ministers should we give him uh, billion brought this how many and then it becomes like um just a, a meal for a family you know yeah. but then we have to look at the bigger picture okay billion uh thank you for having me trevor uh for me i'll just take a different direction with this uh one we saw this coming because you know these are two individuals that have been out of the government for the longest for the last 10 years so i don't think they want to spend the next five or ten years being out in the cold so they are weighing their options and if you look at the the latest opinion polls we don't know how true the opinion polls are but those are the things that are now determining the direction that they'll take so so that is one two these are political trends in our country. We, we saw the last elections, you know, people crossing over the last minute. So I don't think they are ready to cross over at the last minute because, because of the stakes that are there. We have more principles, yeah. unlike last time. So everybody wants to secure their spaces in those, those circles. So uh, I am not surprised. And we are going to see more even, you know, more coalitions, more crossing, uh, you know, the party hoppings and, yeah. and, and coalitions. But therein lies another problem. That movement then means it's not about the people, it's more about the individuals. Right. Mm. It has never been about the people. It has never been about the people. It's about the power. All of them wants to be in power. And, 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 that, and that's the reality. So the coalitions, as my brother mentioned, you know, there was a reason behind the formation of the one, the OCA yeah. alliance, and, and, and they cannot sustain that for, for, for a while. So, so they're looking for other now reasons. So, but the bottom line, it, it's power. It's nothing uh, related to the people. Lavender, is that your reading as well? That it's always been about politicians trying to get power and not the people. Because when they come to the ground, the things they say has always seemed like it's about empowering the people. Yeah, it's not about the people most of the time. It's about themselves. What can we get out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Let us get positions that we can share amongst ourselves. So like the Oka coalition that we are talking about, I have never taken it seriously. <laughs> because we expect them to come out strongly and tell Kenyans what they want. Yeah. To be sincere, the, the race has really shaped to a two-horse race. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, sorry, uh, William Ruto and Raila Odinga. So the Oka coalition, I think what they are trying to do is to try and balance which side is heavy so that we can join. But I don't think there's anything serious as far as 2022 is concerned. Okay. Yes. Simon, are you going this to, for the long haul or will we see Oka crumble and fit into different parties? And be careful with this because we'll be right here with you when things happen. <laughs> Trevor, I don't know why you're giving me a disclaimer. It's already like you want to shape my thinking on no, 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 no. the way I'm going to... Uh, I'm just saying you're on record. Your question. I'm just like saying I'm you're on record. You're trying, you're trying to shape my way of, uh, of uh, <laughs> answering you. But um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate my, my brothers and sister uh, on this show. And I hear them talking about that um, political parties uh, are all about power. And, and I'll tell, I'll tell you, oh yes, political parties are formed so that in a structured legal and constitutional way, then people can access power. A political party is a vehicle towards political power. And there's absolutely nothing with it because that is the nature of a, of a popular democracy. So when I hear them saying that uh, of, of, uh, parties don't think anything except power, because political parties are purposefully created as vehicles to achieve and attain political power. So the issue now and what makes a difference is what do you do the moment now you attain the power? Or what are your intentions? What are your motivations of wanting uh, to attain political power? And I can tell you for sure that uh, as a Mani National Congress under the leadership of His Excellency Musala Mudavadi, uh, we have been very consistent that we would want to see a restructuring of our economy. His Excellency Salam Dabadi is saying, as a party, we want to come and um, give Kenyans an inclusive economy, a working economy, not tokenism. 
not uh, what I'm hearing. Some people proposing that we want to give you some six thousand and and even border border riders and much more than that per day, and and that is just uh, a way of probably institutionalizing uh, tokenism in government because there is no way you will tell uh, my cousin who is in the village somewhere in Moranga that I'll be giving you some six thousand while he's doing his uh, simple simple things and he can make some twelve or fifteen thousand. So that is an insult to the young people. So what we are saying is. Um, of course, anything is expected, Trevor, in terms yeah. of what's the future of Oka. But I want to um, be very clear and candid that we as a party, because I speak, I'm the spokesperson uh, for the um, Amani National Congress, we as a party are not going to trust. Whatever happens in Oka, His Excellency Musala Mudabad will be on the ballot. It is our hope, and we are working very hard indeed to make sure that uh, uh, we, we lobby our friends, we lobby our colleagues within OCA uh, so that they can also accept our proposal and uh, they can see political sense in what we are, we are trying to, uh, to, 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 uh, to propagate. But yeah. uh, I would like to say that uh, the, issue of, um, the issue of young people and their position in, in these political uh, outfits, uh, we can see a lot of positive steps, a lot of changes Across, across political parties. And I want to even congratulate my friends with whom we are on this show, because by virtue of the fact that, uh, Trevor, we are here with you, we are getting involved in shaping conversations, it's a very good indicator that uh, indeed young people have come out very forcefully and uh, they have been embraced by uh, our leadership. And we're even calling upon even many more young people to get out and come and get involved in leadership and in politics, in governance, and in shaping the future of our nation. Yeah. Simon, you say that you don't want to be involved in tokenism. Yes, we've had pro pro positions of 6,000 shillings. We've had 100 billion shillings for the youth and 50 billion shillings for SMEs. That is from both sides. What is that one thing that ANC is offering? When you say you revamp the economy, what is that? What are you putting on the table? Uh, you see, Trevor, I'm very sure that um, every one of us has felt uh, the very, very hard-hitting effects of, um, of um, a struggling economy. If you look at the Jubilee government that some of us voted for for almost three times, because remember there was a, a repeat that was ordered by the Supreme Court. And young people were very, very expectant that now we have a government of young people. I remember then it was an issue of digital versus analog, and uh, the young versus the old. And this government comes into place, gets and indulges in over borrowing. And even worse, most of these funds that have been borrowed, we are not sure whether they have ended up in the, in the purpose for which they were borrowed. So you realize a lot of this money and resources has been wasted in corruption. To make it worse, we have a sitting head of state who comes and tells Kenyans that we are losing two billion per day and uh, he sounds as if he's helpless, as if he can do nothing about it. COVID-19 has not done any, uh, has even made it worse. So you find that and you realize that our economy is in tatters. Our candidate, His Excellency Musalia Mudabadi, has a, a track record of lifting a struggling economy, getting it back on track and making, and making it a working economy. If you look back sometimes in, in the mid 90s when the Kandu government was struggling, and even the, um, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the, the Britain Wood institutions had refused to do any business with Kenya. His Excellency Muslim Mudavadi, then a young man, 33 years old, as Minister of Finance, yeah. was able to structure the debt, renegotiate the debt, uh, okay. put the economy on track, and, and, and he was able to save uh, the situation then for the Kanu regime. Okay. And we are saying, our situation is in, is in almost the exact situation then, whereby the government has overborrowed, COVID has hit us hard, people are suffering, no money in the pocket. Okay. And that's what we are saying. Our slogan is, Uchumi Bora Pesa Mfukoni. Our offer to Kenyans yeah. is we are offering a leader that has experience to turn around this economy, resuscitate the dying economy, so that everybody can feel their part and parcel and benefiting, not, not yeah. just a few at the top, 
not as you in government, but everybody, an inclusive okay. role for okay. everybody. Simon, I'll come back to you to just give me those practical ones. One, two, three. We will do one, two, three. And that's what I'm really into here because we are talking about this issue of the things that are being put on the table now. And Alenga, is this where the problem really lies? Because you mentioned that Azimiola Umoja is more appealing, but there's also the Hasla movement. People can relate to that. They end it's close to what Simon is saying. They are looking, struggling for jobs, and these are young people. Uh, Trevor, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think um, time must tarry not until I, I ask this question. You have given Simon an opportunity, a golden chance to try and tell us exactly what um, Mwishmiwa Msalia Mdavadi refers to when he says he'll revamp the economy. You've given him a fantastic opportunity to at least to ask the how, but he's still stuck on the what which we all know. We all know that the economy of this country is suffering. We all know that this country needs uh, its economy to be shaken up so that uh, people can have meaningful livelihoods. But then we cannot stick on just telling us this is the problem. Even when you visit a doctor, after telling you you have malaria, you would like them to write down a prescription for you. So. Um, Africa, most of Africa's countries are where we are because during our electioneering period, and even when candidates come forward and they're trying to get our vote, they stick on the slogans, fantastic slogans that um, are merely churned out for the purposes of excitement. And that is where I will put even the, um, the hustlers movement that you have referred to. This is a fantastic uh, word that has been coined on the streets just to excite a particular population, a population that has been emasculated by systems that have consistently uh, made sure that they work for the elites, they work for um, expansion and protection of wealth for the few and leave the hustlers in, in, in the cold. First and foremost, for somebody to term you and group you as a hustler, they must first of all define to you how you got there. And if they know how you got there, then they will give you a solution. But they cannot just throw a word to excite the population. Uh, that is akin to just building Potemkin villages. And that kind of excitement cannot really get us from where we are. And I will take this time to also speak to that hustler narrative as a, a disruptive but in the negative uh, sentiment because when you try to brand me as a hustler, it is not a fantastic word, we all know. But then, is it, is, are you trying to tell me I am where I am because someone else is in a better position? Are you trying to set me against them? So is there something that we can work around that brings everybody on board? Even those few that have money, the, the rich, the elite, we also need them to, pro, to be part of the solution for this country. So we cannot isolate ourselves and approach the table of discussions from a point of weakness where we label ourselves as hustlers. Yeah. You are dangling, you're falling down, you're tumbling, but you're coming to the table to speak your, your, your voice. Let us all come into this conversation from a, po a dignified point of view. A dignified point of view in the sense that I do not refer to myself as a hustler. I am a vision-filled uh, Kenyan who wants to change this country, who wants a better place for myself and my children, my neighbors, and everybody else. Yeah. So when I brand myself as a hustler, I have already entered the conversation from a point of weakness. Okay. And let me bring in Lavender on this. And uh, the issue here, Lavender, is which one appeals to you more? As we're still waiting for other coalitions to give us the how, the one, two, three. We know ODM are talking about 6,000 shillings for social welfare. They're talking about four cabinet positions for the young people. When it comes to the hustlers movement, they're talking about 100 billion shillings for the youth. They're talking about 50 billion shillings for SMEs. They're talking about 4 million jobs for the youth. Which one appeals to you more? I think uh, the Inawezekana is more appealing to the youth. The policies are more deep compared to the hustlers. Just as my friend is saying, when you want to brand yourself as a hustler, it sounds more defeatist. Yeah. We want to come and negotiate from our weakest point. Why are we branding ourselves hustlers? How did we get there in the first place? So as young people of this country, I think the best approach we should give this thing is to be national, uh, nationalistic. Uh, we be national to our approaches so that we get to the table and share what we think can work best for us. Yeah. But we wait for these people to come and brand us hustlers, yet they've been in government for the past 10 years. What have they done to the employed youth, unemployed youth? What have they done? Yeah. They've been here, 
when they got into government, they promised millions to the youth. All these things have not been implemented. We are yet here again, electioneering period. They are coming with all the praises, all the, 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 the things that they, they think they can tell the youths yeah. so that they can be voted in. So I think it's upon us, it's upon the young people to come together with something more tangible and tell these people we want these things to be done this way yeah. so that they don't keep on moving us from point A to B with illusions that are not there. Okay. Uh, yes. Billion, which one is more practical? Because <coughs> I, four million jobs for the youth, and that's the main issue that everybody is talking about. Forget about talking about the how. The tokenism of six thousand shillings for social welfare and four cabinet positions. Which one is more? I, 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 <coughs> uh, I think what is, and, and I'm, I'm happy you've asked more practical because you know we've had policies, you know we've had you know uh, the youth fund. We have all all sorts of funds that are directed towards youths, but normally we've never been able to achieve that. So what is more practical for young people now is you know I get my cash six thousand every month, and I thought to myself, and it is not something new. I think we've had we have there was is getting their cash every every month we we've seen even in the US they're giving you know the direct payment to people who are um, unemployed so it's more practical to say we are going to receive this and unlike the other one there is there are so many you know theories behind it and 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 for you to even receive or to be assured of you know those 4000 uh, jobs it is not practical you're not sure if you will you will be part of the people who will receive that will get those jobs yeah. so uh, the 6000 you are sure you will get your 6000 and you're done so i think it's it's more practical yeah. but i i hope they 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 you know, this was an open conversation with young people, so that we, you know, put in our views and what we think that would work for our for for the young people. Because normally, uh, our leaders they don't consult as our, as young people. They come up with figures and the ideas, which is not bad. But I I believe if we are if we are brought into the table, then we would be able to give more. Uh, concrete ideas on how or what we want because yeah. there's what we want and there's how we think and, and there's how we feel about things that are happening around. Yeah. <laughs> si Simon, we, we are back to the how. I mean, we want to hear the one thing that you're going to do as ANC. As, as you still figure out who the flag bearer is and you said you're not talking about, you're not talking on behalf of OCA, which is the One Kenya Alliance. As ANC, what is that one thing that the youth can hold you accountable for? Because when you say you'll stabilize the economy, yes, we can measure that by the GDP, but that is subject to very many different things that is coming through the entire globe. What is that one thing that you will do? So you see the way ODM says they will give 6,000 shillings. You say you're calling it tokenism. Uh, the Hustlers Movement, that is uh, UDA, says they'll give 100 billion shillings for the youth. They'll give 50 billion for SMEs. They'll give 4 million jobs. Those are practical things that they can be held accountable against. What, is, what are the practical things that NC can be held against? How many jobs do you intend to create in a year? How much are you going to subject? How, much are you, how many cabinet positions are you going to give to the youth? Those are the, most of the things that everybody is talking about. You see, Trevor, whenever you see politicians starting to promise uh, anything and everything to young people, uh, be very worried. Uh, one of the leading uh, uh, Soviet Union, Socialist Party Union of, uh, of Russia leaders, uh, Vikito Brashev said that um, politicians will promise heaven and deliver hell. When you see people coming out and promising, we will do this, we will do that, uh, and yet these are some of these are some of these leaders already sitting in very powerful government positions. You must be very very worried. Well, what we are saying as ANC is that um, we want a practically working economy. And our policy and approach is that we want to revitalize the economy. We want to make sure that we deepen and expand horizons by promoting production and facilitating increased uh, consumption. That way you'll find that we'll have more young people being absorbed in the economy and uh, in the production cycle. What we are saying is that we want to fight corruption. If you look at the wastage in this, in this government and in our systems, the money that is wasted every day, if it were, it, if it were properly utilized, and that is what we want to, to achieve, that we cut out public servants who want to go and enrich themselves. Because the dragon of corruption, Trevor, in our system is being perpetuated 
by public servants. It's not even by politicians, because a politician will come into office for a cycle of five years, and then another one will come, and then another one will come, and what politicians get are just leftovers. The dragon in the Kenyan dragon, uh, 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 corruption dragon, is being perpetuated and fed by public servants. You find directors in ministries, you find officers in ministries, and instead of serving the people, because public service is about service, but people want to go into government to make themselves millionaires. If you want to be a millionaire or a billionaire, kindly get out of service, go and become an entrepreneur, go into business. So His Excellency Musala Mudavadi has a specific focus on slaying the dragon of corruption. And when you look at his record, Moshima Musali has never been uh, uh, mentioned uh, adversely in any corruption scandal. Uh, and so what we are saying is we want to ensure that we enhance local manufacturing so that young people setting up cottage, cottage industries for young people so that they are absorbed and they are given decent jobs. By the way, Mark you, Kenyans don't just, young people don't just want kazi. It's not just kazi ni kazi. It's kazi with dignity. A young man like myself who has a young son and a young daughter would want to go back in the evening at home, you know, one hand holding a, 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 you know, a, a kilo of meat and maybe a, a liter of milk, and in a dignified way, not just getting our people into kazi ni kazi. Uh, it, it's about dignity as well. It's about modernity as well. It's about also the, the, the fact that people have gone to school, people have uh, skills, people have qualifications. Can we, for goodness sake, can we, for goodness sake, and for once, make sure that our people live dignified lives? Trevor, you will not believe it. You will not believe it. What young people are undergoing under this regime. And so what we are saying as, 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 as the ANC is that... Um, we want to come in and even review government procurement, you know, to ensure that uh, at least 75% of government pro procurement is locally produced. The services and goods are locally produced. If you look at infiltration of, uh, of foreigners today in, in this country, we are not protecting our local pro uh, producers. The Chinese, our markets are flooded with Chinese goods. Some of them substandard goods. You've heard of sugar with mercury, did you product with what? So we want a government that truly cares uh, for its people. And let me okay. tell you, people can tell when they have a government, deep down in their bones, they can tell when they have a government that cares for them. And we are saying we have a leader that has displayed that he truly cares about, about our plight and he wants to make, uh, to give us as, okay. uh, an opportunity yeah. to have a truly working economy. Okay, Simon. A truly working economy means everybody in the value chain yeah. is participating. Simon, I, the only thing I've picked out there is procurement, 75% locally sourced. Let me give you a direct question. How many slots will you give the youth for cabinet see, secretaries? I've, if it has see, not been discussed, it is okay. You can just mention to us that it has not been discussed yet. I will tell you this, Trevor. That issue has not been discussed. Okay. But again, how, but again, how do you tell whether a government uh, will take care of, say, what, whatever interest groups are there? When you talk of interest groups, we talk of the youth, women, people with disability. When you look at my party, for example, by the fact that I am the second most influential, I'm holding the second most powerful office in ANC after my party leader, that tells you, by virtue of this, that tells you that this is going to be a youth-led movement. It's going to be a youth-led government. Okay. The moment Kenyans trust us and give us a position, the, the, the opportunity to serve them in government. All right. So it's not about promising. It's about involving young people from the word go. Yeah. If you look at our structures, for example, all our directors in the, in the party are young people. Mo we all, most of our branch uh, chairmen across the counties are young people. Okay. Because it's not about promising them. It's about working with them to okay. look for that government. All right. Because there's no way you're going to be on the table when, when you are not in the kitchen, when the cake was being baked. Okay. Billion, you want to jump in? But I yes, yes. I, I, I think it's time that uh, I'm seeing Simon Bonaisji sanitizing their party and the party leader. I hope uh, he gets to look at the cemetery uh, scandal. Uh, this party leader has been mentioned in a couple of, 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 of scandals. So uh, before he sanitizes the, the party leader, he should you know, do more research about him. I was just... No, no, no. You need to know that that, that issue went to court and, no, and my party leader was absolved. He was found to be innocent. He was found to be as white as snow. 
uh, you mentioned has never been mentioned. So that is what I'm just trying to clarify. You know, being guilty and, and, and being mentioned are two different things. So there's also the golden bug scandal. So just just make sure that you... you, only, you uh, my brother, you know, it's good we get fact right. He was only being mentioned as the person and as the leader who was trying to fight off those scandals. He was not being mentioned as having been involved. But as a leader by then in office was fighting the scandals. Maybe you should withdraw so the, your maybe you should withdraw your statement was he has never been mentioned. So that is where the, right. the line that I have on issue. All right, gentlemen, I have to take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk about the youth and why they're saying that why young people will not vote. And we'll talk about these issues one at a time. One of the reasons they're bringing up, they have recycled politicians who don't fulfill election promises. They also believe the system is rigged. They also believe ethnic mobilization is still a problem. They also say they can't travel up country. They say the votes do not count. These are young people speaking. We'll find out what are the remedies to this and is it really true what they're saying. And there's a lot of feedback coming through as well at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV. Kenya use the hashtag Daybreak. I'll sample them right after the break. Right. See you shortly.